I'm Jay Cleveland Payne. This is Things You Might Not Have Heard, and welcome to the show. Eight things, eight stories in the queue from the past day that you vetted as conversational, covering information, politics, current events, and pop culture news. I'll explain the vetting process, how we got the stories into this cast in just a bit, plus give you some fun things at the end, so stay tuned. The fun things are the dessert that you'll love. Broccoli is great, but ice cream is really great as well. We'll get that as well. One thing to remind you, two things to remind you, actually. Number one. Our website, this is a conversation project. More information about us, what we do there every single day, all day long. And of course, our email address, the conversation inbox at gmail.com to get a hold of us for whatever you need to chat about because we'll chat. We get rather chatty at times. So let's get into the news stories for today. And these are stories from yesterday, Monday, presented to you on this Tuesday, March 26, 2024. No particular order as the stories are coming through, but we'll give you some context and how they fell uh, through in your conversation, in your vetting process, and of course, explain the vetting after through all the headlines. But the first story is one of the biggest stories that popped up because it took over all stories overnight yesterday when it happened. It was Diddy's Los Angeles and Miami homes raided by federal law enforcement. So what happened? It's pretty simple. The residents of Sean Diddy Combs in Los Angeles and Miami, two of his houses and part-time, I guess, the part studios, part business uh, properties, were raided yesterday by federal law enforcement agents. Uh, they were connected to ongoing investigations which involve specific details about um, sex trafficking and underage sex trafficking. Um, Diddy has been accused of sexual abuse, mental abuse, abuse of women in general, and right now there are ongoing allegations and investigations on exactly who these people are. Some of the things that happened, highlights from the day, were seeing his kids, two of his kids, arrested on, you know, from camera view, from the um, helicopter view going on as the raids went on, and the fact that Diddy, apparently not even in the country, his private jet, somewhere in the Bahamas, Caribbean, some island that's not exactly here. And so the point was essentially not to raid his house when he wasn't there, essentially. That's what it all looks like. This stuff will be developing, although there's other bigger stories right now. We'll talk about the bridge uh, collapse um, in, in Baltimore in a bit. We'll get to that. We'll have something on that coming on. That's breaking news basically this morning as we do this live. But um, the Diddy story is not going away. The lawsuit's definitely not going away. And if they're just going to roll up on people like this and have this happen, uh, we'll have more to chat about this one. This will definitely stay in the conversation. Headline for story number two, Sasha Baron Cohen fires back at Rebel Wilson after memoir drama. We posted a story, and it was more or less a placeholder about this. Rebel Wilson has a memoir coming out. It may come out today because today's Tuesday and it's big book day on Tuesdays. Uh, so it may be out today, basically coming out soon. And in the um, book called Rebel Rising, she basically said that um, former co-star Sasha Baron Cohen threatened her um, repeatedly and just basically kind of put things in a negative light. Well, both things. Wilson put Cohen in a negative light and Cohen essentially was bad to her. Now, Sasha Baron Cohen is speaking out on this one, uh, saying um, basically the standard, all lies, all lies, all lies. Follow the money, because she's selling the book. Follow the money, because Sasha Baron Cohen's not been in the news lately. Follow the money, because attention is always great for superstars of this caliber. We'll see how many books get sold, how much chatter goes back and forth on both sides, and follow the money, because the money. This is an interesting story, because this is something that goes back to my radio past, and this is something that people would kind of look at me funny when I say this, but the headline, it's a cool headline, space thing, and it's a broadcast thing. Geomagnetic storm from solar flare could disrupt radio communications and create a striking aurora. Now, two things could happen. You could actually see um, a, an aurora in the sky because it'll be so so clear in the sky coming up. And when I tell people that solar flares screw up your radio transmissions, it's the truth. This geomagnetic storm happening on a solar, uh, a solar flare is going to bounce. It's on its way here, and it's going to cause some radio is issues come Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Now, do you listen to radio anywhere? Maybe not. So you may not be a big effect for you there for what's going on for your car listening. But maybe you listen to a radio someplace or maybe there's a store that has a radio playing or most likely it'll interfere with um, some sort of transmission you're doing, maybe even your cell phone because there are radio waves going on there. But there will be some issues because of this big 
not really green thing that you see in the video. It's not really green. It's about a solar flare coming out that is um, a pretty big geomagnetic storm because of it, and it's going to have some issues come Thursday. Uh, first responders, folks like that who use uh, two-way radios may have issues for a while. And you, like I said, your radio transmissions that you listen to on your AM, FM could be bothered for a day or so. But this is a cool thing happening. And, of course, the aurora, the basically this, this, the scene of solar flare, is something that could be very visible to many people out there. So check it out, check it out, check it out. Don't be afraid. And if your radio goes wonky for a while, like I told you, solar flares. Back when I was producing radio, they, they, they believed me because it was true. It was like, oh, solar flares, okay, it'll be over in a couple days, no problem. And then you get one with that one. Yellowstone star Forey J. Smith kicked off flight for allegedly refusing to sit next to a passenger wearing a mask. Kicked off is in air quotes or in quotes, air quotes when I do like this um, from that one. So Mr. Smith wasn't all that keen about sitting next to somebody next to him wearing a mask. He basically felt uncomfortable sitting next to someone wearing a mask. So they kicked him off the flight. There you go. Uh, it's just... I don't even know how to, how to really address this one. This was a very high-ranking story for the day, so we put it in there. We, we um, didn't tease it, but it was one that was kind of uh, interesting for their uh, ones. Like, I wonder if there's things that happen. It's more or less a big thing because calling Forry J. Smith big star in Yellowstone might be a stretch. I haven't seen much of the series, honestly. I may, I'm may thinking about watching it because it seems like something to watch in the back end, but, you know, news and stuff. But um, I don't know if he's one of the bigger deals, like all the folks we talk about who are trying to get more money for being in the prequels and whatnot. But Forey J. Smith is listed as a star uh, known for his role in Yellowstone. He has a role, apparently, and didn't want to sit next to a guy on a plane in a face mask. That's the story. That's what we got for Mr. Smith. There's Mr. Smith. Hi, Mr. Smith. Putin admits radical Islamists were behind Moscow massacre, but still blames Ukraine. So the United States said they gave some intel to the Russians that said there might be some ISIS issues, ISIS case specifically, because radical Islamists are an issue for Russia. They haven't been a big issue for a while, but they are an issue there, and they're basically just waiting for a shot to attack. They got a shot to attack over the weekend. Uh, Vladimir Putin, first thing he said was, nope, Ukraine. And they said, well, we kind of gave you some information, like, nope, bad information, Ukraine. Well, we tried our best, and he was like, nope, 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 Ukraine. Well, he's kind of changing his tune. He's saying that it was officially um, radical Islamists in this attack, but still blames Ukraine, essentially saying that they were essentially using Ukraine as a cover and possible escape route. Now, if you watch some of the covers they had when they caught uh, the guys, you can see they got kind of roughed up a bit when they did their confessions, because when you beat people up, they tend to say what you want them to say. They didn't say they're from Ukraine, but they did say they caused the damage, which I guess is all Putin really needed to do whatever comes next. Your imagination can make that happen. Just dream up whatever you think he could do, and he's probably done it already. This story is number six for this morning. The headline reads, Judge dismisses lawsuit by Musk's ex against nonprofit researchers tracking hate speech on platform. Lawsuit filed by Elon Musk's company X, formerly known as Twitter, which we still call Twitter because that's what we call it, uh, against a nonprofit research group has been dismissed. X, if you will, X has accused the researchers of violating the platform's terms of service by collecting public tweets to track hate speech. The dismissal of the lawsuit signifies a development in the ongoing discussion about the balance of platforms, policies, public research, and free speech. Now, Mr. Free Speech, Twitter, and the X platform showing that free speech may be in jeopardy because people trying to see, just track, say, hey, these people are doing things we call hate speech. And you can disagree with the speech as hate or not, but you can't really stop them from compiling it and putting out reports. That's where things get kind of dicey. We can let people on both sides say all the crazy stuff they want to, and that's essentially good, even if the crazy stuff is what gets us in trouble, but you can't really stop them from gathering crazy stuff. In fact, you can't really stop them from thinking crazy stuff. You can't stop what's in their heads. You can stop them from doing things with that actions, but what's in their minds, unfortunately, we can't read them. And fortunately, they can't read ours because the things in our heads will probably get us all in a lot of trouble. Me first, I'm going to say. Uh, the number seven story this morning, HBO downplays euphoria cancellation report Claims season three is just delayed. Now, 
Euphoria, another store, another um, show I've not watched, mostly because HBO, and so it's it's premium stuff, and I, you know, all the other things we're paying for to kind of catch up on. HBO is another thing. It's also I've I've heard rumors that it's a little dicey, and I don't want to see Zendaya um, in all those 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 situations because my my pure heart just couldn't take that. However, reports have surfaced that the show, which is very popular, has been canceled, killed after two seasons. HBO says um, that's not true just because of delays, 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 production issues. The third season was scheduled to resume um, uh, basically taping this summer, but there is a snag. So despite the delay, it's coming. They're writing scripts. They're working on things. And Dea is doing pretty beautiful things, plus the other characters as well. Um, I think I guess Sydney Sweeney is a member of that, that cast as well. So they're coming back, supposedly, soon-ish, maybe. So says HBO. And the headline for number eight. Work with me for this one. Divorce attorney wants couples, warns couples, warns couples that fubbing is legal grounds for divorce. Now, what the PH is fubbing? Fubbing is the act of snubbing someone in favor of a mobile phone. And a divorce lawyer is warning couples that if you're fubbing your wife, or your husband, you may be fubbing up because it could lead to a divorce. Uh, the concern is that it can create significant emotional distance between couples, potentially disrupting communications and intimacy. This is essentially going deeper in detail. When you start cyber stalking people on Facebook and, and Instagram and falling more in love with an image of a person on social media than actually talking to your actual significant other, that's essentially what's going on. This emotional stress is having an affair even though you may not know the person. And in fact, the affair is actually with the physical piece of equipment right there. Maybe you're just actually playing um, online poker, but you're not focusing on your significant other. That's fubbing, and that could be a offense with a capital PH. Sometimes the stories are mostly for me. Sometimes they're not really for you. Now, the headline we have that we're missing in our errors, apologies, and omissions section. We didn't have time for this one. We actually hyped this one up, so we'll talk about it in a second when we get to the uh, the headline that we're going to tease. But we did hype this one up, and it barely made it into the rankings for engagement. So very quickly, Adam Silver hints NBA might abolish All-Star Game. Um, he's suggesting that they're looking into things because the events are happening that are getting a lot of splash but not a lot of views. And other than being a big old party, what's the actual worth of it? So they may actually scrap All-Star Weekend or All-Star Game itself and make it a, a sort of a festivities to honor the people who made the rankings. But because they're, you know, no defense and the scores like 275 to 187, why are we playing this game? Good question. Uh, Adam Silver, the commissioner of NBA, is trying to answer that question as best as possible. This story here is one we can tease going forward. This is one that we may talk about tomorrow if you deem it worthy by your engagement. What does that mean? We literally need you to engage in this story. Go to our feeds on Facebook and X, formerly known as Twitter, dot com. Uh, for Facebook, it's This is a Conversation Project. For X, formerly known as Twitter, dot com, it is TH underscore conversation. Every 50 minutes or so, we post news articles from various different sources. We are just an aggregator of these stories. We just pull them from things that look interesting, things that are in the news, things are hot topics. And yesterday, we had a lot of stuff that kind of went back to back to back. A lot of Trump stuff that didn't actually make it into the 15, which is interesting. Uh, but it may take some time to get ever with, as they, they roll along. But we're looking for stories that are engaging by you. You say they're engaging, so that's how we tell what stories are talking about. You like, you love, you hate, you share, you click the little buttons on the things and you make it work so we know what to talk about. Top 15 stories of the day will get a chance to be pulled for eight stories in the headlines, plus nine for an extra one that's kind of out there as well. So there's that. This is one we're pretty sure we're talking about tomorrow because it's breaking news and it's overtaking everything uh, from news coverage this morning. As soon as um, it kind of hit, um, I watched the CNN International News that rolled in before the, the, the new CNN this morning. And for the straight two hours while it was on, while I was working on the stuff, and, and I flipped around to the other national channels, this is it. The headline for this reads, Ship strikes Baltimore's Francis Scott Key Bridge causing partial collapse. 
Maryland officials say. This is a bridge that I believe over 11 million cars travel over every single year. This is a major thoroughfare uh, in Baltimore, and it's a big deal when a big chunk of it comes down. A, I guess a, a freighter, a shipping container uh, ship hit the, the section of bridge, and you can see if go to the links for it and watch the videos, essentially the bridge fall down, a big chunk of it fall down into the water. It's night right now for about three, four hours, it's been essentially rescue uh, missions, recovery missions, although that's a lot of time in cold water at this point in time. We will definitely see this one pop up. I've not seen how the response has gone to this in the, um, the pre-stuff before I went on air, but I'm pretty sure we're gonna be talking about this one tomorrow. If not, you, it's because you deem something more conversational, and you can simply you can do that. You can make this a non-story, if you will, by simply just going to the feeds and engaging in the other stories. Over 30 stories will be posted within a day's time, and we'll take the top 15 stories for this Tuesday and present them to you. Eight of them, at least, come tomorrow, Wednesday. That is the plan. That is how we intend to make that happen. So next, talk about our spotlight sponsor, and it is. Fundrise. You may have been seeing more talk about Fundrise lately as people are trying to get back into some sort of habits for investing. Fundrise began, at least for the general public, as a way to invest into real estate and real estate funds. And that's what I'm invested in. The first year I was in Fundrise, uh, even though the market was a little dicey, I lost very, I lost no money the first year. I, I all Every penny I went into Fundrise uh, came out on the positive for the first year of my investments. Now they're opening up more funds and more funds for regular people. If you put in so much money, you have access to the whole kit and your boodle. Now for regular people, regular folks who don't have to put up the bigger money, you have access to these other funds, these other markets, these other uh, things they're doing for real estate, for emerging markets, for things like that. So check them out today. If you check them out using our link at this is a conversation project.com slash fundrise. It's an affiliate link. And that means we get a little cut of commission for you going to there, uh, putting your, your accounts, put in your, um, your deposit, make some money and they'll probably give you extra shares. Check that out. And of course, with your extra shares, we get a few extra shares, a little extra cash in our accounts because we are bringing you in there as an affiliate. So check them out today at this is a conversation project.com slash fundrise. This, it's so a conversationproject.com slash fundrise, F-U-N-D-R-I-S-E. Remember, investments are investments. You could lose money in the uh, options. It could happen. You put money in there and you come out with less of it. It's Investments are always risky, so it's there. But your investment is a way for you to maybe make a little, get a bit of an edge on your life. So give it a shot. Check it out. If it works for you, give it a shot and check it out. The Conversation Project lives online at this is a conversation project.com. We all want to um, thank everybody who joins in on what we have going on here. This is the part where we do a quick little bit of promotion of what's going on and do something really silly. We call it $2 a holler Tuesday. Now, what we do for the Conversation Project is we promote ourselves um, because we need promotion. So we ask you to go to our website, this is a conversation project.com, check out links for subscribers that's partnerships and see if you want to join up and partner and help us out every single day uh essentially get things done but for small tokens of cash we have two dollars a holler tuesday which means come friday and the weekend for the weekend shows as well we'll give you a shout out for whatever you want considering it's clean and it's legal for just two dollars and it's simple this is the only time we bring it up on tuesday so if you just cash app or venmo me at j cleveland Payne, two dollars and we'll if you want to do, use a fake name a pseudonym give it to us in the comments tell us what it is you want to shout out or just say thanks jay for doing great stuff because that's cool as well so just shout outs that simple two dollars via venmo via cash app letter j cleveland like the city p-a-y-n-e and your shout out can come out on friday assuming we can vet it it's all good you see at the bottom if you're watching the video we're scrolling our partners so give them more love a big shout out tomorrow because wednesday's the day we shout out our all our partners but um if you want to be a partner go to our partnerships page if you want to uh just do the shout out for two bucks do that as well uh you can do that as well i think i said that three times let's say it one more time you can do that as well uh going forward what we what we really need you to do make sure that you're stopping by our website checking out our feeds facebook and twitter emailing the show with the things we should be doing to improve the show and sharing with friends, families, coworkers, and as I used to say in my daily thing, sometimes random strangers. The more views we have, the better we can do. We can make things work out if you get us lots of views. That we can work out as well. If you want to help us out directly, we will take whatever you can give us and we will use it, put it to good use. Promise. And now, 
And now, let's get to the fun stuff. Fun stuff happens every single weekday morning. We're always getting fun stuff with birthdays. <coughs> because birthdays are the funnest of fun stuff. Today, we are definitely celebrating our elders with a big spotlight who needs all the spotlights you can find because she deserves it. Diana Ross, the lovely Diana Ross, is 80 years old on this day. Also on this day, Stephen Tyler, 76. And oddly enough, Stephen Tyler is older than Martin Short, who's 74 years old today. That boggles my mind. But Stephen Tyler, really, really old. Dude does look like a lady and an old lady at that. Looking more like Lily Tomlin every day, who was also in her 70s. However, birthday wishes and love going out to Diana Ross, Stephen Tyler, and... Martin Short. For our history lesson today, let's go to all the way back to 2000, that year, where Vladimir Putin was elected as president of Russia. I wonder how that guy's doing. I wonder how his political career, I wonder how his life is doing, how Vladimir Putin's doing being elected president of Russia back in 2000, since he got re-elected about a month ago for third, fourth term. So that's 24 years plus another maybe eight as president. When Donald Trump says president for life, you might want to think about what he's saying. Oh, by the way, the word for the day, we found a spit, spot for it. It is here, and today that word is scarce. It is defined as deficient in quantity or number compared with the man. You can get the words of the day directed sent to you every single day, either in this newsletter, or the newsletter we have for things you might have heard, or via the Big Words Project. Check it out at thebigwordsproject.com and see what's going on with that one. Big announcement of that one coming on Thursday, so look out for that. And while you're, you know, being scarce, get some spinach. Not scarce because a lot of kids are eating these days, but today it's spinach day. I'm not a big fan, although I'll eat it in the salad and I'll eat it with, as um, um, leaves on a sandwich. Not a big fan of the cooked spinach. Not a big fan of spinach in dishes. Not a big fan of Greek dishes because spinach is a lot of them. So it is that is just me personally. But the wife loves it when we're um, uh, when we you know there was a time where every time we made eggs we had to put spinach in it because it's what she wanted and, and the wife gets what she wants. Uh, so find some way to make some spinach in your life. Just go to Subway and get spinach on a sandwich. It's just like just tell them just like one right over there so I won't notice it, and you'll get spinach in your life. And you literally won't even notice it. A can of spinach like Popeye eats it. That might be a bridge too far. So that's it. We're done. We've knocked it out of the park, I would say, for this Tuesday, March 26, 2024 edition of Things You Might Have Heard. My name is Jay Cleveland Payne, and this has been a blessing. It's always a blessing to um, do my performance art for you and give you new stories because I believe the news stories that are being covered, not exactly as great as it could be. So here's a little alternate way to do it. Here's a little supplemental source because we're not CNN, MSNBC, Fox News. We're not even Newsmax. We're not even o OAN. We are what we are. Uh, we thank you so much for allowing us to be with you as we are what we are. We want to have more of you in our lives. So make sure you Stay limber, stay hydrated, stay on task so you don't do anything silly so we don't lose you because we don't want to lose you and we want the people who love you to keep you around as well as long as possible. We're working on news stories right now. We've got some in the queue ready to go and we'll post them all day long. About every 50 minutes you can check us out and see what's in the queue and engage in the stories that you like or don't like. Engage in stories that seem to be engageable. We will bring them up tomorrow. Eight of those stories out of tomorrow's batch of stories or today's batch of stories. Well, and with that, let's get out of here. One more time. $2 holler Tuesday. Venmo or cash at me at Jay Cleveland Payne with $2 and a message. We'll vet it and we'll chat you up come Friday because we could use the cash. We can also use a little bit of break in time. So take some, take a break, take some time, try to use the word of the day in a sentence and we'll see you tomorrow. Let's do that. Let's see you tomorrow.